Chapter Six, Ambush. Mr. Shang was amazed. How could you start the project this morning? I just gave it to you. Simon didn't help. Did he have to sit there with his mouth hanging open? He looked like a dork. Well, I thought fast. I heard about it from some kids last year. Mr. Shang rolled his eyes and walked away. Phew! Close call. At recess, we couldn't go to the bat cave. Too many kids came up and wanted to know if I was telling the truth. Of course, I'm telling the truth. I shouted. I know lots of cups. It goes back to when me and Simon were heroes. Then all the kids shut up. They knew about us catching crooks a few years ago. When they left us alone, I turned to Simon. Am I a genius or what? It's pretty good, Sam. We do know some police officers, and yeah, I think you've come up with a good plan. For the first time in a long time, Simon and I gave each other the bat handshake. This is where I link my thumb with his thumb, and we wave our fingers. Our hands together form a bat. See? Mr. Shang ended. And when school ended, Mr. Shang changed his mind. You don't have to stay after. You two give me a headache. Go on home. So Simon and I raced home. It only took us five minutes, eleven seconds, and thirteen hundred seconds. That's five minutes, eleven, and thirteen on hundred one hundred seconds. In case you wanted to know, we told our moms we had to go to the police station. Why? What did you do now? My mom asked. Very funny. We hopped on our bikes and were at the station in six minutes, thirty-two seconds, and eighteen on one hundred seconds. We knew just where it was because we'd been there lots of time before. It's like I said, we didn't have to stand around too long before someone came over to us. I guess they don't get kids coming in all the time. I'm Officer Brennan," said his this one cop. "What can I do for you?" "Uh, hello, ma'am," I said. "I was wondering." I mean, me and Simon was wondering. I mean, Simon and me were wondering. I sort of trailed off. Simon and I want to do a school project about the police," said Simon. "Can you help us?" "I was getting to that," I said to Simon. "Sure, come this way," the cop replied. Simon and I followed Officer Brandon over to the desk. We told her our names and what school we go to. Then we told her a little more about the project. She gave us some stuff to read. This is all about your local police force," she said. "It will give you lots of basic ideas. Anything else?" "Thanks, ma'am," said Simon. Then he stood up. "But I had a better idea. I was wondering if you'd come up to our school. You know, sort of like a show and tell." Officer Brennan smiled. "I might be able to do that." She nodded her head. "That might be kind of fun." So we told her we'd walk to Mr. Sean. Then maybe we could set a date. And that was that. We were back on our bikes and zooming along. Our project was just about done. We have to read the stuff she gave us," warned Simon. "Yeah, yeah, I mean it, Sam." Simon told me. "You had a great idea, but we can't blow it. We could get a really good mark for once." I said, "I'd read it, okay?" Sometimes Simon is just a real pain. I figured I'd get around to it next week. No hurry. But then I found out my parents were going to keep me grounded over the weekend. I said Simon and I to work on our. I said Simon and I had to work on our project, so we got to hang out a bit. Even if my mom kept sticking her head into my room to see if I were if we were really working, and we were working mostly, except for all the time we spent looking at the money. On Monday we talked to Mr. Shang. He really liked our idea of bringing in the cops as part of our report. So then we biked back to the police station after school. We talked to Officer Brennan again, and soon the whole thing was set up for Thursday. The next day, Simon and I headed to the Bat Cave at recess. You know, I might become a cop when I grow up. I told Simon. I thought you wanted to be a hockey player. Well, when my NHL career is over, then I'll be a cop. Simon started to say something, but just then the yellow Corvette pulled up. Simon wrote the time down. Twelve thirty-seven and eighteen seconds. After a while, the big guy got out and stretched. Then Simon sneezed. The big guy looked up. He shaded his eyes from the sun. He kept staring up at the hill. The two of us sat really still. We were hiding behind some bushes. I don't like this, Simon whispered. Shh! 
I whispered back. He can't see us. Just don't move and don't sneeze. But of course, Simon did. A real snotty sneeze. A real wet, disgusting one. Hey, kid, shouted the guy. I told you to stop watching me. Then the bug, bug guy bent down and picked up something off the road. I saw him bring his arm back and fling something at the hill. Stones! The creep was throwing stone at us. One landed real close. Thud! Then another and another. One hit the ground by my foot. Then I heard Simon make a funny sound. I looked at him. Blood. Simon had been hit.